We're going to take a look at what you guys did for this week's design phase in preparation for our final, which is just to make one nice rendered image. Let's really quickly just look at the assignment before we take a look at the designs because uh, we can get that out of the way, make sure that we understand what it is we're heading towards in this final week. Um, choose your favorite concepts from our second week, so this stuff that we're about to look at, a final development, and create a single high quality painted image to represent the game. So you do have some options here um, besides the size stuff, which is first to choose either a promo image or gameplay image. Either one of those is fine with me. So a promo image would be like an advertisement, a poster, box art, something that is flashy and fun looking, but doesn't necessarily represent gameplay. And a gameplay image would be like a mock-up of the screen. You know, make it look like an actual platformer game, make it look like someone just paused it or just took a screenshot and that's it. So the requirements are that this must be a full color image, so not black and white, not a line drawing, it needs to be fully painted, and no smaller than 600 by 900. Um, you can pick a standard size image in the 16-9 or 6-9 aspect ratio. 6-9 would be this one up here, 16-9 would be 1600 by 900 or anything like that. You can look up specific sizes if you really want to. Just make sure that it's not smaller than 600 pixels in any one dimension and you're gonna be okay. Right. Um, you can also choose if you want it to be upright as like a poster or if you want it to be, um, what is, what's the other one, uh, horizontal, like a um, screen on a computer or a television. Either one of those is fine. Just make sure that you choose it with a purpose. So either a promo image or gameplay image for a promo, the main character with a full background striking some sort of action pose would be typical. Optional, you can include enemies, friends, obstacles, title graphics if you want to come up with the name of the game, that sort of thing. Gameplay would be a mock-up in-game action shot, show the UI, so that would be like live score, that sort of thing. The main character almost certainly needs to be on screen. Some sort of level layout, so in this case you would be making probably platforms and enemies and stuff like that, obstacles, enemies, etc. All right, so either one of those is fine. You only have to do one of them. You do not have to do both of them. Um, you may use anyone's concept art from any of the previous weeks. So including designs, layouts, ideas, etc. Steal, borrow, remix, whatever you want to. Nothing is out of bounds. When you're doing concept for a real game production, all of the concept is there to be used, to be inspirational, to be directly copied from whatever is necessary for you to make your idea. Okay? So you can combine all of the elements that you like most into a single appealing image, which would be a great way to go. Um, utilize the painting techniques that we learned earlier in the quarter, so that would be during our brush control exercises and also during our uh, overcooked and Animal Crossing matchup. Uh, mashup that we did. Um, use those painting techniques. If you don't remember, I can demonstrate some of them. Utilize the color theory that we learned when we were doing the uh, evil genius uh, layout of characters so that you can make it as appealing as possible. Don't just randomly pick colors and throw them together and hope that it looks good. Try to have some system in place so that your image looks as nice as possible. Um, try to make the image as clean as possible and as presentable as possible. So don't leave obviously unfinished areas, you know, dead smack in the middle of the image. Um, try to make sure everything is painted at least somewhat cleanly. Everything to make it look as presentable as possible. Okay. Any questions about those requirements yet? Okay. Here is some suggestions for setup and instructions, although you may already have an idea of what you want to do. Um, browsing the available concept would be a great first step. If you don't do that, then you're you know, working harder than you have to because there's gonna be a lot of good ideas to use. Make a collection of your favorites to use. I would recommend um, start with the elements that you want to include, um, find or create a layout, someone might already have one that you like, and paste the elements right in where you want them to go to envision your final image, and then roughly draw your final layout. So you could just copy paste things you see today all over the screen, um, scale them, rotate them, flip them, whatever, to get a kind of idea of what you're looking for, 
and then I would recommend drawing your final layout. So if the character pose is not quite right, that's fine. You can place them on the screen and get an idea of it and then draw your final layout with using that as a reference. So it'd be a nice way to get your first rough draft out of the way just by copying and pasting things. For painting your final image, paint each element on a separate layer so that you can easily adjust them and move them around. This is not only a good idea for um, moving them, scaling them, positioning them, but also for color adjustments and for keeping the amount of work that you're going to do manageable. If you do everything on a single layer or on just a couple layers and then you need to fix something, you might end up messing up something that you already liked. So I would recommend without going crazy, if you've got characters, give them each one layer or if they're far away on the screen, they can share a layer. If you have different elements that you're not sure where you might want to position or you want to copy paste a bunch of them, give them their own layer. Your background should be at least one layer, maybe two. Um, if you've got UI such as lives and score, probably give that a layer on top of everything else so that you can position it in whatever corner makes sense and scale it properly. Okay, so use, use the program for what it's good for. Work smart so that you don't have to work too hard, right? Um, don't work on a single element to full polish while ignoring all the others. This is something that happens a lot with students where they will have a final layout and elements that they want to put into it and then spend the first 18 hours rendering the main character and zero on the background and zero on the platforms and zero on the objects and zero on the UI. And it's just like 18 hours poured into this one element and everything else is not done. Don't do that. That's an amateurish way to work. Okay, so it's better to get everything into a decent state first before focusing on one part. That means that if you haven't drawn everything even one time, don't paint anything yet. Draw everything first. Just have a design, have a placement for it before you paint anything. That'd be a really smart thing to do. And then if you're going to move on to um, basic shaping of the painted elements, try to do that with everything before you spend a lot of time rendering, detailing, texturing, that sort of thing on your other elements. Because at least that way, your image always looks like it's right in the middle of some stage of progress altogether, rather than being wildly out of balance. Spend the most time on the most important element, probably the main character. If you want us to look at the main character, spend more time and care on the main character. Okay. If you want us to look at the enemy, um, maybe it's the villain or maybe it's a particular object. You decided that the entire game revolves around a specific object that the goal is to get. Spend more time on that. You know, be more careful about that. Don't neglect everything else as in not give it any consideration. But if you're spending lots and lots of time on a background element or on painting the sky and the clouds or something like that, then you're probably wasting that effort because it would be better spent on the things we're supposed to look at. So keep that in mind. It's normal to render the background and small elements with less detail. You are not being lazy. You are not you know, shirking your duties and forgetting your job if you don't spend the exact amount of time on everything. That's normal. Okay? And in fact, in some ways, that's good. In the background, we don't want to focus on little things. So don't spend a whole lot of time shaping them carefully. And if it's way over near the edge of the border of the, of the picture and you don't want to draw our eye over there, don't pour lots of detail into that element. Keep our attention in the middle of the screen somewhere, right? Keep our attention on what's important by giving it more attention in detail. Regularly save your work and zoom out to see your whole image regularly as well. This is something that comes with time, but if you obsess over small details in your work, then it's very likely that they get out of proportion, out of balance, end up having far too much detail, etc. This is a very regular kind of struggle for people who compose entire images. Also, obviously, save your work regularly so that you don't lose it. If you come to me next week and say, Tabor, I worked on my project for 20 hours and then lost it all because I didn't save, sorry, you have to turn something in. Whatever you turn in is what I can grade. And if you didn't manage your time or your file at all and you lost everything, well, sorry, you lost everything. Make sure that doesn't happen by being a little bit more professional and cautious than that. Okay. 
If your colors look strange, when you zoom out and take a look at your whole image, use an adjustment layer or clipping mask and change them. So every time you save and zoom out, take a look at your image, it's an opportunity for you to notice something and to change it if it needs to be changed. Really ask yourself though, those of you who are maybe a little bit more perfectionist and will obsess over things, does it need to be changed or is it just a little weird? If it's just a little bit weird, leave it for now until you've got most of your image finished to really adjust it. Or if you're very early on in your production of your image, go ahead and change it right there and then. Okay, but don't repeatedly change the same thing over and over and over just because you're not sure. Okay, really have an answer before you choose to change something. If the position and size of elements looks odd, move them on the layer they're on, which is another reason to have them on their own layer. Um, rotate them, flip them, do whatever you want, paint over them, use a clipping mask and paint over parts of them, um, add extra elements to them, such as costume on another layer. Do whatever you have to do to make sure it looks okay. Okay? and try to do that early rather than later. The later you are in the production of your painting, the less you should probably be changing on a scale like that. Okay? Don't get stuck in tunnel vision. Um, so tunnel vision is when you focus on one tiny little bit and cannot see anything around it or aren't focused on anything except for that one element. Don't get stuck in tunnel vision. If you need to, take a break, walk away from it, stand up and walk around even for just two minutes and that's enough for you to see things differently when you come back, okay? So have a little bit of caution there. Any questions about all of that advice? Uh, yeah, uh, is this assignment still based on the magic cat? Yep. Okay, just making sure. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna take a look at what all you guys did this week right now. Any other questions? Is the genre still the same, like the platformer? Or? Yep. Yep, same idea, same cat, same original concept. Now we're adding on all of your ideas about how to expand that. Okay, one more thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to be 2D, right? It cannot be uh, Pixel Arts 2D. Let me rephrase that. Does it have to be like drawn? Like it can be pixel art, but don't underestimate how difficult it can be to make pixel art look good. Like pixel art is not easier necessarily. Also, no, 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 no. It's harder. also that would mean that you have to do a little bit of math up here because your image still has to be 600 by 900 minimum, right? But pixel art might be far, far smaller than that. So you're going to have to multiply the pixel art in size so that we can see it in an appropriate, comfortable size. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you might reasonably only have like 10 tiles horizontally across on the screen. So if you've got 32 pixel tiles, 10 tiles, that's only 320 pixels. Minimum, you're going to have to zoom in twice to end up with 640 pixels wide for your image at that point. Just try to do that calculation early if you're gonna do pixel art. Okay? You got it. Cool. Yeah. What oh, was there? So for the size of the image, do you, do you want it to show, uh, show, one second. Mm-hmm. He wants to show you uh, uh, like the size of the image on Friday? Or if you're worried about it, then sure. If you're not worried about it, then you don't need to show me. I just want to make sure that we're not getting some very, very tiny final paintings, which would be unfortunate because it'd make it hard to tell quality. You probably shouldn't go super gigantic either. If your painting is more than 4,000 pixels long or tall, you're probably going too big. Does that make sense? Can, can you give us an example on Friday, uh, just just as an example? For size? Well, this is a this is a size right here. Yeah. But I'll just I'll do that right now. We'll just type in aspect ratio. So, 
there's going to be lots of uh, Photoshop. Uh, why would it need to be? I mean, aspect ratio is just going to show us size. Like right here. Here's a table. 16-9 aspect ratio. 10-24-5-76. Uh oh, there's machines going on. Can you guys hear that? I can hear it. Is it obnoxiously loud or quiet okay if it's if it's quiet then we're fine so in this this column right here 169 your image could be it's in pixels that's all in pixels right there and anything in this column above that very first one would be fine and by the way the other one I, I labeled it wrong it's four three is the other one so anything in the 4-3 um, row or the 16-9 row is perfect. Can you show me how to set that up in Photoshop? Yeah. In fact, let me drop that into Discord as well, just because it's a nice table to have. There you guys go. I'm going to make sure I have this image visible here. New, or actually, let me... There we go. I want to make sure I have Photoshop side by side with it. There we go. New. Change the units to pixels. Type in the numbers in one of these rows. So let's just be generous with our size and say, um, I want a 16-9 aspect ratio. So I'm just going to multiply these two numbers by 100. So that's 1,600 by 900. So we'll do 1,600. 900 there we are here's my image size if we have this image size and we want to change it image image size and we can just type them in right here so one of the largest ones in this row 38 40 by 2160 and since I had uh, locked the aspect ratio constraint proportions it typed this second number in for me. So I didn't even have to enter it. So that would be that big. But same aspect ratio. Does that help? Um, I heard the beginning of a question somewhere. Hi, Patrick. I'm sorry. No, carry on with that. I'm going to do a different question later on. Okay. Does that make sense? Just type in the numbers. So if the picture is really small, that means I have to uh, make it larger so that it can be seen. Yes, or, but if I'm working with a smaller format, I have to keep zooming in to see it clearly. You you should not work smaller than these sizes. Smaller than these sizes, and you're almost into pixel art territory. If you are dealing with pixel art, multiply it by some number that brings you above 600 in one of your dimensions. So, if you, are you looking for an example of that? Like, what would happen if we had pixel art? Sure. Okay. So if we add pixel art, let's just set this down to a tile size, like 32 by 32 pixels. So this is absolutely tiny little square. Then we're going to have to probably duplicate that tile over and over again to get our platforms, to get our background. So if I look at my image size, then how many tiles? Cross in my image am I going to want? How many tiles up and down am I going to want in my image? I first want to find that out and then I'll find out how much do I have to zoom to make this an appropriately sized image again. Okay, so let's say tall, I want eight tiles and horizontally I want 10. So I'll make 320 because that would be 32 times 10. I'm going to turn off constrained proportions. And so 32 times 8, that I'm going to need a calculator because I'm not that good at math. Let's see. 32 times 8, 256. Okay. So then in height, 256. 
So now here is the size of our pixel art. So we end up doing whatever kind of work we want on our pixel art, blah, 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 blah. Okay, all of that cool work. Then we have to zoom this in. It's all going to be single pixels, right? Carefully placed, because that's what pixel art is. But we're gonna have to make it big enough to actually see. So we're gonna go to image size. If you are zooming pixel art, be careful about this. The resample image option will mess up your pixel art. You wanna either leave this at nearest neighbor or just turn resample off entirely so that you can just change the document size. Um, you might want to stick with percent. That could be a better way to go because then you can just change 200, 300, 400 percent. Um, you wouldn't want to do this going down in size though, but going larger, it should be fine. Um, sometimes I leave resample on to nearest neighbor just to be very, very careful. I feel like maybe that's more predictable, but you could just leave this off. The only difference then is you have to change this to uh, percent probably points I think no is representative of text so we don't have the option for pixels if we do that that's the only problem so I'll leave this on with nearest neighbor so that will guarantee sharpness in our pixel art and we take a look at the size and look at our chart to see what do we have to go we should probably go above 640 which is only two times that width value right there. So if I do 200% here, then it's previewing to me what would happen, 200%, 200%. So our height is still 512, which is too small. So we have to go a little bit bigger. Let's try 300%, see what we end up getting. So we get 960 by 768, that's fine. Um, I do wanna take a quick look and see if this is close to any of our established sizes, and it actually is. It's very close to the 4.3 resolution right here, 960 by 720. And so that could be something we could trim down to or just leave it a little bit larger. It would be fine as long as you're not going underneath this size. We say, okay, now it's all scaled up. You can see it's fairly pixelated, but here's 100% zoom. Now we've got an image that would be of an appropriate size. If I wanna make it exactly the right size, then I can use my marquee tool do a fixed size and enter in the exact numbers that I see over in this column. So it'd be 960 wide by 720 tall. Okay, So now it's locked to trimming to the upper part or the lower part of the screen or somewhere in between. So I could cut off some of my tiles and have the exact right size by going image crop. And now it's directly on the exact right size that I would want. Okay. Cool. So in, in my file, do I have to include uh, the size of the file or, or no. do I just pick whatever size that I want and put it in the file? Pick anything that is a 16-9 or 4-3 image aspect ratio. Either one of these rows, pick whatever you want. All of these are good because all of them are above the minimum size, except for this very first one here. That's the only one that's too small. Okay. okay. Anyone else? Questions about that? So, so both, both of those sizes are good for the 14 by 3 and 15 by 9? Yeah. 4 by 3, 15. Yeah, it's because those are very common screen aspect ratios. You can kind of see over here in this little depiction. 4.3 is a classic TV, 16.9 is like a monitor. Most televisions now are 16.9 or wider, but either one of those are pretty standard image formats. Okay. Any well, other? I have a question that's a bit off topic. Uh-huh. About uh, Maya. Mm -hmm. is, is it the same in Maya or is it uh, different? Uh, that's, that's a really complicated question. You can do the same thing in Maya, but it depends on what you want. It depends on what sort of video you're trying to export. What I would recommend is that if you make something standardized to like what YouTube wants, you're probably gonna be fine for other formats as well. Um, YouTube has um, 720p as one of the receptive video formats that you could receive. That is a size. And so if you wanna know more about like image and video size and aspects, I would read into that. But long story short, you can make a video any size you want, 
but if you make it a non-standard size, it's going to look weird when people play it on their devices. And same thing goes for games, by the way, you guys. If you're going to do game development, you should probably know what, what platform you are publishing your game to and what size it receives. Because if you don't, your game's going to look weird. Especially mobile games, yeah? But I'm like not making videos in Maya, but um, if, say, say I want to make a, a gun or something in, in Maya. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm going going to export it, um, one sec. So, so say, say I'm planning to use Maya and I, I want to put my file in the folder. Uh, say I don't want a video, I just want to render it. Mm -hmm. And It's the same okay. consideration, really. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, it it's just all a question of what device do you expect someone to look at your work on? Are they going to be looking at it on a web browser? Well, web, web browsers are primarily viewed through either phones or computer monitors. So a 16-9 aspect ratio would make a lot of sense because a nice high quality monitor is 16-9 horizontal, a phone is 16-9 vertical. So both of those work. 4-3 um, wouldn't make as much sense because 4-3 is more of a rectangle. So on a tablet, phone, or monitor, it's going to add black bars to the sides or to the top and bottom, depending on what you're looking at it on. Very few people are gonna view your work through a classic television nowadays. But if you were doing like a broadcast cartoon, then maybe you would want to have a 4-3 aspect ratio available at least because a lot of people do have old fashioned televisions. Okay. But 16-9 is by far more preferred nowadays because most devices kind of adhere to that. Mm hmm all right let's take a look at you guys work so I'm just gonna go through each every one of these take a look at all of them just really briefly kind of make comment on them but let's start with Sophie's because this was her idea in the first place and let's see where she took her concept before we see where everyone else took the concept okay so we can kind of treat this as like a point of comparison so here we've got uh, nice pictures of the main character cat with his big sparkly eyes and uh, sort of witch's hat, cape, and staffs. We've got different kinds of staffs, kind of themed along different lines, and a nice mock-up screen of side-scrolling beat-em-up or kind of platforming where you're shooting magic at little jumping heads of kitty cats. So it's all very cute and fun. Like this wet hat. Look at that. That's funny. Okay. And we've got one more. <clears throat> Here's a nice full mock-up. So this is kind of what we're looking for next week. We would just want to add in maybe some enemy elements and things make it look like we're in the middle of actual gameplay. But this is pretty close to what we're looking for next week. Fully rendered and realized uh, concept. Okay. So there we go. That's what Sophie did. So let's take a look at everybody else, starting with Alex. Okay. Hey, on a side note, mm -hmm. um, is Piscal a good tool for doing the, the Final Cut 3? Piscal is a good tool for doing pixel art. Good. Um, later on, I might want to ask you to help me do the math or the ratio. Okay. Yeah, just po if you post it up in chat, then either I can help or someone else can, or if just ask at the end. Help. Yeah. Okay. So here we've got various different uh, cat states of dress, all based on kind of the, the default cat head that we saw last time, and gone with pixel art, of course. Some pretty fun ones in here. I like the little bow tie one. So this is cool. And then let's take a look at staff's firing. It's interesting. Pew. <laughs> 
So we won't be able to have like animated stuff in this assignment, but you could have it mid firing with like, um, you know, sparks and, and fancy rainbow stuff coming out of the staff as like an action shot or something. So that's definitely possible. So some nice kind of like thought through and polished stuff, not a whole lot of exploration that I'm seeing like different ideas, um, designs of various elements. There's no background or enemies or anything. So composing that final image, if you were all alone, Alex, would be really tough because all you've got is a cat and a staff. And what you need is a full promo or a full game mockup. So you got a lot of stuff to supply. Luckily, you're not alone. We've got everyone else's concept to pull from as well. Okay. Thank you. Alan. Cool. So this again is pretty close to what we'd be looking at for like next week, a full rendered kind of promo graphic. Looks like we got the cat kind of casting a spell on what's maybe like a magical door or something like that. Um, maybe gonna open that up and go into a level or something. So cool. It's neat, it's, it's polished, which we weren't really looking for this week. We're kind of looking more for exploration and I don't really see anything other than this one image but maybe there's ways that you can change it or add things to it to make it more dynamic for next week or elements that you could add say in the background or something in order to you know dress it up a bit cool thank you all right avion cool so we got a sort of layout with our cat front and center in the foreground and evil bad guys and stuff in the forest in the background looks like maybe a kind of like rainbow ball of yarn pickup for like a mock-up of the game screen um, the only thing I'm not sure about is whether or not we're looking at a promo or a game screen because the flat kind of side on aspect of this makes me think we're looking at like a mock-up game screen but if that were the case we kind of need to have it at the proper scale for a platforming game which would be probably character a bit smaller platform a bit higher that you're running along different visible platforms and then characters that you can interact with in the interactable plane if it's a promo then maybe something a little bit more dynamic like the character interacting with the yarn or the enemies would be called for so that's the only thing i would say is there's a little ambiguity there about which one you're going for um, as far as the stuff you've designed the cat's pretty cool all of his brown colors though are going to blend in with the trees so either consider changing the trees a little bit so that he can pop out like get more green hills in there or changing these colors a little bit because his skin and his hat are kind of blending together and the hat and the background are kind of blending together so something like that would probably help okay cool Thank you. And I love the little sparkles around everything. Those are fun. Salvo. Okay, so Salvo's got some poses for like attack, victory, crouch, a magic item, a heart to fill. So things that we could populate our world with or our promo. And we've got a nice mock-up game screen. So yeah, this looks like, you know, Ghosts and Goblins or some kind of side-scrolling beat-em-up video game. It's a lot more representative of that because We've got the UI. We've got what clearly looks like an interactable plane with characters in it. So that whoop, so this would be like we just took a screenshot. So that would make perfect sense to me. And we got the character attacking over here, this big uh, monster cat or whatever it is that he's drawn on the right hand side. All right, cool. Works for me. Let's see, Trevor. Nice, we got some sort of like mounted ferret infantry or something, that's pretty neat. So kind of messing around with the idea of other characters in the game world, whether or not this is an ally or an enemy, kind of left up to us to decide, but kind of looks like it might be an enemy. And then we've got some different body types, I think, an exploration of the body types for him. A toy knight, okay, so he's got this idea of like Maybe this is like a pet store kind of thing. And this is like a toy and like a pet ferret or something dressed up like a knight. It'd be kind of cool. And it's a ground enemy, so she says down there. All right. Neat. Let's see, Rudy. 
Rudy's got a mock-up layout here as well. Um, if it is going to be like a platforming game, get your character up a little bit higher. Usually you don't play right on the bottom of the screen. You're going to probably stand somewhere like up here just for a little bit of buffer. And it looks like he's casting a spell and he's got a little yarn ball. Whoops. A little yarn ball there. Um, if you are going to do a mock-up game screen, make sure that you guys actually make it feel like a platformer. Like, we don't see very many platforms in a lot of these. And that's a hallmark of platformers, that there's things to jump on. You know, or at least that the ground has, you know, curves and valleys and hills and pits and stuff like that. That would help it to feel a lot more like a platformer game. Cool. All right, let's keep going. Isaiah. So Isaiah's got Stone Guardian and a Titanium Bodyguard. Those are cool. Kind of magical construct creatures. Um, they look hostile, so probably like enemies that you have to fight or get around. Here's some attack, idle, and struck by lightning. It's really cute. That'd be cool for a nice kind of action shot. And then we've got a few more like costume alternatives. So yeah, that could be something that, that you explore is like if the cat is going to get like an ice power, you could set it inside like um, a frozen fortress or like an icy tundra with enemies that are trying to prevent the cat from moving forward and like um, reaching up and grabbing some some totem or like um, the hat or the, the staff or something as your action shot. That make a lot of sense. Cool. Thank you. Elias. Right. So these are design variations. They're, they're very similar. I actually have trouble seeing the difference until you like pointed out that that one had no nose and was a little bit chubbier. They're really, really similar. So you're kind of tacking down what you like. And if you picked your favorite one, that's cool. You know, go with that one. Um, we've got the staff variation, body length and nose. Yeah. Let's see what else we got. Okay. Different costumes and props and powers. Neat. I like the, the little icons down here. That would make a good sort of addition to the UI of having this cat icon next to like the health or the or the power meter or something like that. Let's see what else we got. Oh, having a complete set gives you a bonus or something, sure. Let's see, enemies. Um, so we've got like a ghost cat, like an evil incorporeal thing. We've got a big old fat cat, big cat, it says. Um, so yeah, having it stand in the way or like doing some sort of like smash in the ground attack or rolling around would be a good sort of action shot. Um, bad fish. So is it just sitting there on the ground and you have to just not touch it? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, Catazon box. All cats want to get into a cardboard box. So it's like a temptation. That's funny. Okay, so he's taking a kind of a humorous, you know, kind of tongue-in-cheek route, which is fine. You have like dangling balls of yarn, you know, to sort of like distract the cat. So we've got sort of a layout here where it's like a kind of a temple or dungeon, looks like in the background. We've got a Catazon box and some platforms to jump on. I think maybe that's, I don't, I don't, oh, it's like a demon's cat eye, I guess it says banishes a non-boss enemy to hell. Holy shit. Um, throw to scare away nearby cats, a water bottle, catnip. Cool. Yeah. A lot of interesting concepts here. Oh, and some explanation. That's, that's cool. All right. Very good. Lots of interesting things to consider there. Let's see. Jasmine. So Jasmine's got a couple different body and color variants, some hats, staves. I like this wagon wheel one. It's kind of neat, especially the crooked, uh, crooked handle is kind of cool. And some additional enemies. So we've got the big guy that we saw with, I'm not sure what's in his hand, maybe like a ping pong paddle or something, but this one's got like nunchucks and like some sort of paper mask. And this one's clearly like skeletal. So interesting. Some items, keys, gems, bottles, hazards, that, and some game environments, okay? So a lot of good sort of brainstorming happening. Thank you. Let's see, oh, we did Sophie's, right? Let's keep going. Yesenia. 
Cool, so we got some different proportional faces and heads and bodies. So you go with uh, you know one of these longer hair kind of cats that looks like a wizard, a traditional wizard. Have them with the hat pulled down over the head and robe, kind of Yoda-like. I love that staff with the, the fish. It's pretty cool. This one looks like a, a sort of nerdy kind of cat with glasses. Got some interesting items here, like a candle and a bubble, different facial variations. Yeah, really cool. I do think this little guy right here has the most appeal, but some of these faces I think have potential, like especially the grumpy kind of um, hairy one looks very wizardly. And even this very simplistic one over here that has um, what I want to say is no mouth. Like it's got a nose, but no mouth. I think that's got some, some potential there. It's very cute maybe as an icon or something. Okay, some different costume and color design. So here in particular would be some different alternative color schemings that you could use. The red and gray one I think has a lot of potential. And the pink and purple one um, looks very magical and otherworldly. So potentially that could be a really great way to differentiate the character from a more normal environment by having them these kind of neon colors. Up at the top here, various stabs, hats, capes, details, lots of cool stuff. Items. I like this one, this potion of bull strength with a little corker right there looks very fun. And that's a, a nice kind of uh, health potion, especially colored red usually is the, the kind of color coding for those kinds of things. This is cool, a little spray bottle. <laughs> that's cute. Okay. So yeah, lots of good stuff to draw from. Abilities and poses. Yeah, so opening up a portal is a great one, right? Like casting the spell or standing there is sort of like position of power and having this portal open up to a magical world could be a really good uh, basis for your final drawing. Piranha attack is cool, like firing magical ghost piranhas. Gliding with the aid of the, the cape or the staff, makes sense. Magic shielding fight mode i think he's just kind of like hulking out or super saying and saying in out or something cute mode i don't know what that means but it is cute <laughs> you can't hit something cute that hard. <laughs> that's true here we go we've got a, a layout kind of option um where we've got giant mushroom forest and sort of like spores floating in the air along with what looks like maybe cavernous kind of pathways and rocks yeah this, this would work great. This is a good basis for which you might have gameplay. Um, we've got a like forked path here, which kind of leads to the question of like, would you be able to walk up or down freely? So that's more like a side-scrolling brawler in which you've got control of like your Z-depth by moving up and down. So that could be interesting as a, as a variation of the side-scrolling platformer. Oh yeah, that's really cool. This would make a nice kind of promo poster. You got your character silhouetted against like the adventure you know through a portal nice all right lots of good stuff there so considering looking to a couple of these for like layout if you're interested in that andrew andrew's got a real cat <laughs> i knew somebody was going to do it just like there's a cat a <laughs> realism approach i love this magic ability paw that's a really cool thing to have like this big cat claw coming out of the ground like a ghost. That's like legitimately scary, even if it wasn't like a cat based game. Ball of yarn flying with tentacles. That's kind of weird, but kind of interesting. Almost like it's a alien or something. Cool. So there's some more cool things to draw from. Isaac. So we've got some pixel art here. Um, we've got what appears to be like a power bar or experience bar plus hearts so that's the universal kind of like health or hit meter here's our character holding a staff by the tail which is probably the best approach to the realism thing that i could imagine that's pretty funny and then i'm not sure what that is but some sort of enemy green guy with a club so it does look like a platformer slash brawler though because we've got kind of the background and platforms already evident i'm just not quite sure what's going on in it probably want to see more mid-action like casting the spell or um, jumping across to bop them on the head or something. Uh, oh, color variant. If it's between these two, I'd probably go with red because it sticks out more because we can see the platforms better. 
but probably want to think it through a bit, like get some more detail in the sky. Think about how to differentiate your characters from the background. Sometimes you have to put like a big outline around every enemy and character because the background's too detailed or just getting your color scheme to kind of contrast a bit more might be the way to go. Um, usually washed out colors, low intensity um, contrast in the background and higher intensity contrast in the foreground is a good way to accomplish that. Thank you. Nathan. Cool. So we got a lot of like character development and various different kinds of approaches, sort of like classic American cartoon approaches here, a little bit more anime inspired there and maybe here. Neat. So kind of like in this one or either one of those two, like maybe together. Here's the wider kind of exploration. You can see like maybe some Cuphead influence, uh, a little bit of like uh, television cartoons. Like some of these look like Family Guy to me or like this one looks kind of Sanrio. Yeah, lots of really good explore exploration. This one looks familiar too from something. Not sure what. Gumball. Gumball? Yeah? Yeah. That's ah, okay. Cool. So we've got like character three heads tall thought maybe too much and then brought it down to two kind of like that and then we've got different costumes and stuff i tried to read what this says i cannot understand what this says down here when you start feeling bad don't be something because sad backwards is and that's not good okay I'm gonna I'm gonna just go over here now. Why'd you do that? <laughs> you just like going just wanted to? Um let's just say it got I made a sad camera. Uh-huh. <laughs> His power is sad. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay. <laughs> so then we got wizard uh costumes. Kind of a little Mickey Sorcerer Apprentice here and some more classic kind of wizard. Robes, open robes, cape. Lots of good ones. I kind of like this one, I think. But the Sorcerer's Apprentice one's pretty cool too. Okay, so we got some color scheming and some expression sheets. That's kind of cool. So you got a two-tone cat that looks like you're kind of going with. That'd be nice. We got two-tone eyes and skin. Yeah, I think it works. Let's see. Is there any one that I like more? I do kind of like this one or that one just a bit more. The, the two black eyes, white streak down the middle, or white streak and muzzle, black sides. I do kind of like those a little bit more, but the one you picked is pretty cute. So no reason to change it on my account, but yeah. Kind of sticking to like the dark purple, gray, black sort of area. Nice, some examples of like how to make the yarn ball look like a power up. Nice, like a butterfly kind of flying with magic yarn ball. That could be cool. Okay, very good. Let's see now, we want to go to this one. Neat. Yeah, so you're going for like the hedge maze kind of ogre thing. We've got platforms to jump on, your second player character there, two different sets of UI to show that this is a two player game now. Changes the staff ability right here. I would love to see him firing something at the at the hedge guy right now. That would kind of complete that. But yeah, looks like a, a full game. Cooperative platformer. Is there a difference here? Oh, it's got annotations. Okay. Great. Thank you. Cool stuff. Robert. Robert's got this virtual reality cat thing going on. Okay. What is your, your green cat? It's like a cactar. Is Robert here? That was the bad guy. Yeah, but like, what do you think he is? I went with, because the way she had it was like, 
the, the, the head was down in the center. Yeah. So I just I just made it like uh, what's his face from Into the Spider Verse. Into the Spider. Yes, King. Ben. Oh. <laughs> Giant square body and then just a head. Like that's just where his head is. Okay. They kind of look. Are they on the same team? Or are they like? Uh, is he running no, from? They're, they're, uh, so I didn't have a, a lot of time for it. It was meant to be like a Scott Pilgrim style. Oh. So, so the VR, the virtual reality stuff, is the grid. Okay. That I had in place. Okay, that makes more sense now. I was like, I'm not sure. I, I call it a cat dummy. Yeah, cat dummy. He does kind of look like a punching bag or something. Or I was thinking maybe rock. I think he was made out of uh, like carved rock or something. Okay, cool. And one. Oh, neat. One, you've got the most unique looking cat of the bunch. You're the only person who deviated from the black cat with two different color eyes. Good job. Um, and it looks like a wizard too, so that works for me. This kind of has an adventure game kind of vibe to it to me, uh, just because we got all that depth back there. Like you could click on this and go talk to that owl or something. But yeah, a pretty decent kind of mock-up for um, having your game screen. Probably want some interactable bits and a little bit of action happening. And like I said, if we're going to go for platformer, probably include some platforms. But a pretty decent first attempt here. All right. So that's the big collection of stuff. You can take from anything, both here or what Sophia did week one. So anything related to the Magic Cat and you're gonna to try to craft your image from it. Just really quick, I did wanna look at platform games just in general to kind of make sure that you guys are on the same page about what a platform game looks like because sometimes you guys are drawing stuff that doesn't look anything like a platforming game. Typically, you're gonna be in a side view, you're gonna have a lot of vertical space and your characters are gonna be relatively small on screen because the idea is jump around, climb things. So even in this one, that's just a power up. Mario's not gonna stay that big for the rest of the game. But this is a good example of a gameplay mock-up in which this character's rampaging and going nuts, this one's over here doing his own thing, and then enemies are just like in the way, right? So keep in mind that if you are gonna mock up a actual platforming game screen, a lot of these are gonna show you how to proportion things properly. Okay, generally you're gonna have a fairly small character on your screen okay and a lot of uh, negative space both top and bottom like you don't want your character running right along the bottom of the screen this is pretty typical where your ground is going to be somewhere in the lower third and then you'll just be able to see underground for some space for no reason at all even if you never go underground okay a lot of these are good action shots as well the character is typically using some ability right in the middle of the action so this one's throwing the hammer at this Yeti character. Or this one right here, he just fired this big blast right at that enemy. And this one's actually blocking with his shield too. So both of them are in the middle of some action. Here's one where they're just running, right? So even just that, just dynamic motion, that's a good way to kind of showcase the character. Here's Sonic's like balancing on this platform while Tails is flying. You can see we're collecting rings on this like movable platform. So a lot of things going on there. That one's too small to see. Let's move down a bit. Something happening there, not really sure what. Oh, here we've got, um, what is that? Way of the Ninja, Mark of the Ninja? Mark of the Ninja, where we've got this character highlighted because they are in light, I believe. You get that red outline around them. And there's some interactable button presses on the screen. Been a while since I played that though. So this is all by way of making like a mock-up game screen. If this is what you intend to do, right? Try to get a lot more of that action and actual gameplay visible. Okay. Let's try platform game um, advertisement or promo, promo image. See what we get for that. Hmm. So that's a that's a good promo image for a game, which I assume is a platforming game, but looks nothing like a platforming game. That's kind of typical with promo images. They don't necessarily look like the genre sometimes. Like this kind of looks like a shooter, you know, Destiny 
Halo, etc. But I have no idea what's going on. We've got these little meeple-like figures with floating heads, and they're just kind of standing there. They look cool, right? It's a nice composed image of this team. I don't really know what they're going to do. There's a cool one with some like space helmet guy like clawing his way through a tunnel. Again, not really quite sure. If you didn't know what Hollow Knight was, this isn't going to help. But that's fine because it has the right energy, the right kind of attitude to attract someone to the franchise anyway, even if you don't know it's this like brawling platformer. Here's another kind of typical one character just kind of looking confident in a appropriate environment with the title graphics. You could definitely do something like this. Or I think we even saw this one last time. I really love the spiral staircase rampaging mob kind of thing going on in this. Okay, so with a promo image, really it's more about attitude and fun than it is about gameplay. Rayman got lots of attitude. No idea what the game's like from this, right? Wouldn't be able to tell it was a platformer, but that's okay. So big difference between these two, but both of them are completely valid. Decide which one you want to do first. The promo image is probably going to rely on a more dynamic posing, uh, a more loose interpretation of the product, and more action, so more excitement. A game mock-up is going to be more about creating a um, believable game environment along with the character doing something that would make sense in the context. And some UI. Okay. Any questions about that? Yeah, can we take our assignment from this week and refine it for our final? Absolutely. Very cool. And in addition to that, you can add any of the elements that occurred in anyone else's assignment as well. So if you saw something that you really liked, for instance, that ghost paw, I really like that, put it in your assignment. Slap it right in there. So basically we can use, like, maybe we can make a revised version of our old ass. Correct. And probably need to. There were a few people that really polished things up to like a, an almost done degree, but most of you had rough stuff and that's what I asked for. Okay. Any other questions? Just having fun looking at these images. You pretty much answered questions that I was going to ask during the entire thing. Man, I'm good. <laughs> Take all the now. No, I'm going to. I'm going to toot my own horn. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> uh, I have another question. Is, is yeah. class on Friday, are you going to combine some of these concepts? Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll draw layouts, mostly. So I'll, I'll sketch um, game mock-ups. I'll sketch uh, promo images. But also, I'll remind you guys of some of the painting methods that we've covered previously in the quarter, because that's probably going to be more useful. So like if you wanted to paint something appropriately, how would you set that up? How would you accomplish that? If you wanted to decide on a color scheme that would work in a certain situation, how would we do that? So those more practical things, the tool-based things. Okay, and anything else that you guys request, I'll also demonstrate. Is it, um, do you prefer us to base our new, um, for our final, do you, ba do you want us to, like, not base it on the drawings we did previously? Or no, you should. Yeah, you totally should. That's why we do them. If, if you do brand new drawings that are based on nothing, then why did we do the previous two weeks? Right? Oh, what I'm asking is, like, do you want, do you want us to, like, go at someone else's concept rather than our? Oh, not necessarily. Just decide what you like. If you want to combine them, like you don't have to go with either or. Um, you could, for instance, start with your own and then say, oh, you know what? That one where he had like the rope bridge in the middle, I really like that. So I'm going to add the rope bridge and that other person's background where they had like more space and forest. I like that. So I'm going to stick that back there. Um, someone else might just take the big old ogre cat that you have and put it in their own. All of that's free reign. If it's exactly like this week's work, then I'm going to raise eyebrows and go, okay, what did you do this week, though? 
right? If it's exactly like the layout of this week's work, just with more polished art, that's fair. You just didn't want to take any other ideas. But I would encourage you to because there were a lot of good ones. Yeah, there were a lot of good ones. Yeah. Like those different looking stats that we saw earlier. Exactly. Yeah, and there were a bunch of power-ups, there were a bunch of enemies, there were a bunch of environments, lots of stuff to draw from. So first things first, pick through that stuff, find the stuff you like the most, download all of it, and maybe just cobble it together into a sort of collage to get an idea of what your final is going to be like. Okay. And take a look at other relevant reference like I've been showing as well, just to make sure that you're really targeting towards looking like a, a real professional final project. Cool guys, anything else? Any other questions? Yeah, this isn't actually about this specific assignment, but mm -hmm. um, do you know when the next time grades will be updated? Um, as soon as I get to it, which is usually tomorrow. Okay, cool, yep. thank you. Mm -hmm. There's ghosts and goblins. Oh wait, no it's not, that's Maldita Castilla. I think I've actually played that one. It was pretty good. It's like Ghosts and Goblins, though. All right, guys. Yeah, that's neat. If that's it, then you are adjourned for today. This just doesn't seem too intimidating at all. To good. That, to be honest, that's kind of my goal, is to break this up into achievable steps so it's not such a big, impossible task. That's the best way to describe it, achievable. This does not feel like we cannot do anything that... This doesn't feel like impossible or something like, oh god. You have a good one, Daver. See you later. You know? Yeah, and that is basically my goal is to do that, to break it up into achievable chunks so that you're not overwhelmed by the, the concept of doing this whole thing. Thank you, Mr. Daver, for all of this. No problem. All right, you guys. Let me continue with doing the, the kitty. Probably around night, night, uh, cool. I want to make this look good. All right, you guys. Then I will talk to you next time. And if you have any questions in the meantime, just post them up in chat, and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Bye. Catch you later, alligator. Bye bye.